welcome to another Top 10 Amazing World episode. In today's video, we will be looking at 10 of the weirdest punishments that have been handed out instead of prison. When you think of weird punishments handed out for crimes, you would be forgiven for thinking they would have been seen centuries ago. However, there are some creative punishments handed out in the last 20 years that may amaze you. Make sure you stay until the very end of the video to discover the weirdest punishments handed out ranging from the medieval period to only a few years ago. Number 10. Flute of Shame. How long would you be able to tolerate a bad musician? 5 minutes, half an hour, 2 hours. These days, if we don't like something we're listening to, we can scroll through the list of artists or playlists and choose something we want to listen to. In medieval times, bad musicians were forced to wear a device called the flute of shame. It was a way to publicly shame bad musicians and other disturbers of the peace. Their fingers were then clamped to the keys to give the impression they were playing the instrument. And to add further humiliation, they were forced to wear the flute while being paraded around town. This often resulted in the public throwing rotten food and vegetables at them. Interestingly, the flute of shame wasn't just reserved for bad musicians. Any performer would be eligible for this punishment. Dropped a couple of juggling balls while jesting. Shame flute. Played an instrument out of tune. Shame flute. For any performer in this era, the flute of shame was the ultimate punishment. Number 9. Graffiti artist's toothbrush paint job. Graffiti is an extremely good way to express your inner creativeness, but it must be graffiti that has been approved by the council. In 2019, an amateur graffiti artist was caught in the act, illegally plastering graffiti on a railroad caboose in Painesville, Ohio, United States. He was found guilty by Judge Michael Ciccionetti and handed a very unconventional sentence. Ciccionetti made note of the artist's otherwise clean record and gave him the opportunity to brush up on his painting skills. The artist could paint the rusty, old railings outside the courthouse. Sounds pretty straightforward, but there was more to this weirdly creative punishment, it had to be painted with nothing other than a toothbrush. Alternatively, the artist could spend 10 days in jail. I think I know what most of us would have opted for in that situation. Number 8. Silver Spoon Child. There are some people in the world who are wealthy enough to provide for their children so they don't have to work if they don't want to. In order to teach their children the value of earning money, sometimes drastic measure needs to be enforced. One such Spanish couple did just that and stopped their 25-year-old son's pocket money and repeatedly requested he gets a job. This infuriated their son, who took his parents to court. Thinking the law would side with him was his first mistake. He lodged the case hoping to secure a regular monthly payment of 400 euros but the judge overseeing the case ruled heavily in his parents' favor. He ordered him to leave his parents' home and get a job. Instead of securing a 400 euros monthly payment, he now found himself needing to find somewhere to live in 30 days. The judge did recommend his parents give him 200 euros a month for two years to help him find independence, so it was not all doom and gloom. The moral of the story, never to bite the hand that feeds you. Number 7. The jeweler in the Colosseum. The Romans were known for their ruthlessness, especially when it came to punishment, so it's no surprise we have an entry in this list dating back to Emperor Gallienus. One of the forms of entertainment and pastime during this time was to take a visit to the Colosseum and watch the Emperor's gladiators battle to the death with other gladiators and animals alike. Not everyone that enters the Colosseum to battle is a gladiator. There were times when a form of punishment would result in a duel with a gladiator or animal. This was the case for one such jeweler, who was found guilty of fraudulently selling glass to the Emperor's wife, instead of real gemstones. The jeweler was told beforehand that he would be fighting a lion and was naturally terrified thinking about fighting a lion. As he walked out into a full arena, petrified, the crowd cheered waiting to see the duel. As the large cage door was opened, instead of a lion waiting for him, a chicken walked out. The crowd roared with laughter. The emperor insisted the deceit he had practiced on his wife, had been his punishment. The jeweler was allowed to go back home as the terror and fear he felt was justified punishment enough. Let's hope he never did anything like that again. Number 6. Paddle I won't do it again. Flood conditions caused water levels of the Grand River in Painesville, Ohio to overflow in 2011 and most people evacuated and got themselves to safety, there were two people who had a different plan. Instead of getting themselves to safety, they gave a new meaning to extreme sports. The couple grabbed their raft and decided to go rafting. They were spotted by a rescue worker. The couple had little regard for safety as they weren't wearing their life jackets either. Before the rescue worker could get to them, they were out of sight. 
This was the beginning of a couple hunt for rescue workers who had feared the worst for the couple. Lifeguards and a helicopter were dispatched to try and find the thrill-seeking couple. The couple were later spotted on land a few hours later, safe and dry. When questioned by authorities, they lied and suggested they had never rafted in the overflowing Grand River. They later appeared in court for their thrill-seeking, reckless act, where a judge found them guilty. In this case, the judge gave the pair an unconventional option for punishment, stand in a little swimming pool, wearing life jackets and passing out water safety brochure leaflets at a festival in Painesville, or 60 days in prison. The couple was grateful to the judge for not enforcing jail time and were left slightly red-faced and embarrassed handing out leaflets in a children's paddle pool with their life jackets on. Number 5. Double Shrew's Fiddle. Being a woman in the medieval period in Germany and Austria was particularly difficult. As though being a woman wasn't difficult enough, any women found guilty of fighting, quarreling, bickering or gossiping were sentenced to the double shrew's fiddle. The shrew's fiddle, also known as a neck violin, was a piece of wood that had holes for a head on either side and some hands just in front. The women would have the shrewd fiddle fitted around their neck, meaning they were now facing the person they were feuding with. The idea was to make sure the feuding women let out all their verbal anger. They were not released from the neck violin until they had resolved the dispute and had to walk around attached to one another until it was. Could you do this with one of your enemies? Let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Drunkard's Cloak. Used in the United Kingdom during the 16th and 19th century, the drunkard's cloak was a form of punishment used for various crimes. When drunkenness was first made a civil offence in England in 1551, this form of punishment became much more popular. The drunkard's cloak was actually a barrel with a hole at the top for the head and smaller holes in the side and bottom of the arms and legs. Someone found guilty of drunkenness would be made to walk through the streets wearing the ridiculous barrel for hours for the rest of the town to laugh at. The idea behind this punishment was to encourage people not to drink in public and only drink at home. It may have worked too. Imagine tripping and falling while wearing the barrel, you'll have rolled all the way home, further adding to the embarrassment. Number 3. Slumlord Tenant. In 2008, a slumlord in Cleveland, Ohio, United States, was accused of several building code violations on dozens of his rental properties. A judge ordered him to be monitored 24-7 under house arrest in one of his own slum properties as a taste of his own medicine. He was also ordered to pay $100,000 in fines. The slumlord was ordered to turn over all rent payments he collects from tenants to the Cleveland Housing Court, where the money would be used to pay for repairs and cleanup of his 41 properties. The judge also issued the slumlord with a probation order that prevented the purchase of any more properties without the permission of the courts. The only time the court permitted this slumlord tenant access away from the property while on house arrest, was for special family functions, attending church and fixing up the properties. Number 2. Stinking Justice. Don't you hate when you get someone to do a job for you but they do it badly? Unfortunately, this is not something new. People have been bad at doing jobs for as long as people have been paying people to do them. Some of the most amusing punishment comes from England from the medieval period through to the 17th century. During the reign of Henry VIII, any public toilet cleaner found guilty of dumping the waste he had collected in the open streets was made to stand knee-deep in a bucket of the same waste they had dumped in the street, with a paper hat while declaring their wrongdoing. This sort of punishment wasn't just reserved for public toilet cleaners, though. Fishmongers and butchers who were caught selling rotten meat and fish were forced to stand in a T-shaped block of wood with holes for the hands in the crossbar of the T, with the bucket of their rotten stock directly underneath their noses. To add salt into the wounds, passersby would hurl abuse and rotten vegetable at them. The idea was simple, to deter the merchants to be ridiculed and lose business, with people speaking in the town not to buy your products. Number 1. Dressed in drag. In 2001, again in Ohio, United States, two men were caught and found guilty of a crime that has no place in society. The two young men were obviously trying to show their machoness by throwing glass bottles at homes and cars, seriously denting one car. With the knowledge of prisons being overcrowded, the judge got creative with his sentencing. He gave the young men two options, spend 60 days in prison or walk for an hour along the main street wearing something less masculine, dresses, makeup and wigs. This seemed like a no-brainer for the young men, although the humiliation and embarrassment of walking down the main street in the town they lived in where friends and family could see, was probably not an easy thing to do. One of the men chose to wear a black skirt, a coat and a black wig. The other wore a red wig, red dress and a fur coat. A large crowd of spectators gathered to watch this weird punishment, but the walk was cut short when someone in the crowd threw a soda bottle at the young men and it hit one of them. 
we're certain that wouldn't have happened in the medieval period. Maybe justice was served though. Well, that concludes another episode of An Amazing World Top 10. Did you enjoy this episode? We have so many more of these and would love to do another video if you liked it. Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and hit the like button so you don't miss any more videos. See you next time.